Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Don't worry, Toby. Just use the force. Like in that film, you know. 365 Flicks Podcast. 365 Flicks Podcast. Come and listen to it right after you finish this podcast you're listening to. It's got Chris and Kevin and a weather guy called Toby. What's the point in a weather report on a podcast I hear you ask? Well, there's only one way to find out. Download every episode that is currently out. And listen to those bad boys right now. It's got Toby Osmond, who is kind of a guest host, but thinks he is the most important part of the podcast. Hashtag not joking. You can find 365 on iTunes, Libsyn, Spotify, and awesome websites like DangerEntertainment.net, Nerdly.co.uk, and Tangent Bound Network. It's like shit in a field. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out. Uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazy life podcast and uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number or um, go to nami.org or um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out and try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you... Um, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And, um, lastly, please do not, um, replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and, uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. Sucks to the last drop. Are you gonna blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't care how you're doing. What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world. Sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day Welcome to the Crazy Life everybody. My name's Jen and I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, is Brian and Heno. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi, hi. How's it going? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just being honest. Yep. <laughs> That's all we ever are here is honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just laying it out there. Right. 
All right. Well, I won't skip because I know it's my turn to go first. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to put uh, kind of those terrible on hold for a moment. Yep. <laughs> Big tease here. Yep. <laughs> Come on, get to it. No. <laughs> I want to hear about Heno being miserable. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing better. Yeah. We all, but no, we have to wait. Um, no, um, I don't have a whole bunch to share with the group this uh, um, this time, even though it's been two weeks since I've been here. Um, quite frankly, there's other than, um, well, today I actually had an interview, which was awesome. Um, it was a very good interview, but it was interesting because it's one of those jobs that it's kind of a stretch job for me. That's a little bit above my current, my current stat, you know, status in the working world. Mm. It's like that next level type job, and a lot of the things on the um, on the description, the job description, I have yet to do. I've been around it, I've seen it happen, but I've never actually physically done it myself. Mm. So. I was really surprised when they called me um, for a phone interview and the phone interview didn't go all that well. So I was really surprised when I did get an actual in-person interview. And in fact, I think the person who set up the interview, who did the phone interview with me, was surprised as well based upon his verbiage used in the email <laughs> that he sent to me. Wow. Yeah. That, that always makes so, you feel good. <laughs> right. Like, like I guess I'm supposed to give actually, you an interview. <laughs> yeah. I think it was more along the lines of they actually want to see you in person. Can you come in? It's like, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, sure. So I went in with a lot of trepidation and um it didn't help that they have a gray on white sign. There is on a pole out in front of the building, but the building is tucked behind a bunch of trees. So as I'm driving down the road, which I know I'm on the right road, I didn't have my GPS on because I know the road fairly well. So I'm like, if it's on this road, I'm sure they'll have a sign. I'm sure I'll see it. Drive past the place. Hmm. So I'm like, great. So then I turn around and I, when I turn around, I ended up getting on the expressway again, which... I did not intend to do. So I had to go another five minutes out of my way, turn around and go 10 minutes back to the, you know, regardless, long story short, uh, I ended up being like five minutes late. So I hate being late. I'm a very punctual person and it really, so my anxiety is a little bit off because of this situation of this interview on top of the fact that it is an interview, which is a very anxiety-ridden situation to begin with. And then I'm late on top of all of this. Hey, so by the time you've been up, worse going into an interview. Yes, I have. <laughs> I, I actually, I was, for lack of a better term, you know, excuse the language here, folks, but I was a little on the fuck it side because <laughs> I'm just like, you know what, what, I obviously they must see something in me, but who knows? Maybe yeah. it's a quota they need to meet, like interview so many people. I don't know. You sit down for um, the interview and they're like, Well, see in your you know, they're like, What we really liked about you was we see that you have a history of punctuality. And... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh. <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm like a bundle of, of nerves and I'm finally at that point where I'm just like, I don't care. Screw it. I'm just going to be me and just do me and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's an experience to chalk it up to, you know, chalk it up to another experience in my books. So I go and I sit down and it was in terms of interviews, a fairly easy interview. They really didn't. They asked me a lot of questions about my resume, about things that I've done and experiences that I have had. Didn't bring up the actual role itself very much other than to give me a outline of what the role is and what would be expected of me during in this role. So it was one of those situations that I'm like, well, 
I can talk about me for an hour because shoot, I do it every week. <laughs> and for those who <laughs> who cannot see, uh, Brian is rolling his eyes and shaking his head very vigorously. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I was just sitting here listening. <laughs> so, but yes, I'm like, well, so it was just me sitting there talking about myself myself for an hour, which I'm like, okay, I guess I can do this. I met with HR for a little bit and everything seemed to go really swimmingly. Now, I'm really, I don't know what in, in my head I'm really struggling a bit with this because it was too easy. And like this type of position is kind of out of my league. So the interview should have been much harder than it really was unless they're not taking it serious, like taking me as a serious candidate. So, you know, I just, I'm not, I'm baffled by the whole thing. I'm trying to logic it out and I'm just really struggling. Struggling with the whole logic behind it. Maybe it's a situation where they they want someone who's not fully um, uh, cemented in how they do things. Like if you come in, they can train you. Mm-hmm. You know, like the you, you can be brought up to speed. If they bring in somebody who's already been doing this somewhere else, they have to leave that training behind because this you know it's a different company. Even though it's maybe the same job, yeah. every company has their little nuances that are you know, fickle. So Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it's that. Could be. And there will be a lot of travel. Um, Pretty much 30% of the job is traveling. Oh my. Like what kind of travel? Um, Through uh, Chicago, Philadelphia, um, Minnesota, Wisconsin. So flying. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which I don't mind flying too much. You know, that doesn't mm-hmm. bother me. And traveling by myself, I've done it before. So it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, being gone one week out of a mu- every month is a little much for me. Yeah. You know, that's a lot to be away from home for a homebody. Um, but, uh, you know, I, it would be an interesting experience for sure. Mm-hmm. And really push me into out of my comfort zones and really kind of stretch me to see what I'm capable of. Yeah. So, so, so we'll see. So it's kind of, it'd be interesting. Mm-hmm. It's always funny um, though, isn't it? It's like you go into an interview and you're just like, okay, as you walk out and then it's like, they call you back and they're just like, Oh my God, you were so great. We, just, you know, like, and you're like, all right. Like you get that vibe when you're in there that they just, couldn't care less. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and it was just one of those situations. I mean, everybody there, like, they were super nice mm-hmm. and really welcoming and very engaged, you know, and it, so it wasn't anything necessarily wrong with any of it. It seemed, everything just seemed very easy. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I guess that's a credit to them as interviewers, <laughs> because, you know, for them to make me feel at ease and be open to talk about everything that we talked about with my work and my career and and stuff. So I, I don't know. We'll see. And then um, I have a phone interview actually tomorrow. So um, with another company. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, this is the same company that I interviewed with at the end of last year that I really like the company and I would like to get into that company. So, but the fun part about this one is it's on the, um, I'm almost overqualified for this one. Mm-hmm. So, which I'm is good and the- bad. Yeah. Cause you don't know. Yeah. Cause if you walk in there overqualified, that could either mean you're going to be amazing at the job, which I think you would be either way. You know, I'm not saying differently, but, mm-hmm. but the other part of it could be that you're bored, you know, like you're the smartest kid in the room kind of thing. And you're waiting for everyone to play catch up, <laughs> you know? Right. Now, one of the things that really interested me about this position was that you'd be a knowledge source for pretty much for the department, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a real big draw for me because I've often been kind of underplayed or overlooked in my other Mm -hmm. careers. So that means a lot to me to be considered a knowledge source. Yeah. So... 
that kind of drew me in, into this particular role as well as the company that I'd be working for. So, you know, then there's always the, the compensation, you know, when you're overqualified, a lot of times you're overcompensated elsewhere. Mm. So they can't pay you as much as you need. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So you I don't think that's going to be really quick part of the conversation. Yeah. Right. Right. I listened to a podcast where a guy was talking about that, uh, about how the balance of power in interviews, um, like at the company he runs, um, they don't, everyone knows what everyone makes. And the reason, Angel- yeah, they do it that way so that first of all, people can hold them to like, if women are making less than men, they can blatantly see it and it will get corrected. Um, hmm. also, so when you walk in and sit down, they won't ask you what you made at your previous job because by doing so that shifts all the leverage into their, their side. Mm. Because if they know what you've made before, either they'll go, Whoa, that's too much for us. And immediately in their head, basically cut bait or, you know, they'll, they'll go awesome. We can get you way cheaper than we thought kind of a thing. You know, if you make that offer. So this guy was like, we do it the other way. That way we actually, both of us sit down, blind and have to negotiate based on what we need from the situation. Hmm. And I love it. I loved his approach. I don't know that it's a sustainable concept because I feel like you're going to end up paying people more than you want to a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, because standard business move is you get people as cheap as you can, you know? (laughs) Right. But yeah, anyway, sorry. I, I just, it reminded me of that. And I thought it was just such an interesting, um, look because he's right like you were saying in that situation if they know what you make currently and that's less than they can pay they may at that point think you're no longer a good you know like oh she'd never take less money to work here right when maybe you would you know like you said you seem interested you like certain things you know you've done that before in fact i have where you've taken less money because you thought it was a better opportunity then this particular case, they would have to, I'm thinking that we're going to be a significant amount apart. I could be completely wrong, yeah. but uh, I, I just have this feeling that we're going to be a little bit farther apart than either one of us are going to be able to bridge that gap. Mm. But we'll definitely yeah, we'll find yeah. out, you know, they remembered me. Um, the woman who set up the phone interview, you know, shot me an email and said, you know, Hey, we're probably not going to use much time. Cause I know we've talked before and this and that and the other. So, um, you know, I'm definitely making an impression on them. Hopefully a great one. Sounds like it's a good one. Yeah. Um, so we will see, yeah. see how all this ends up shaping out, but it was just, it was interesting. Cause, uh, you know, then they called me into work today for a few hours. Um, I'm getting really comfortable in my current role um, with the new stuff that they threw on top of my regular job and I'm getting into the groove and it's feeling pretty good. And then I went to work today and I'm filling in for somebody else for a couple hours and the managers were there because it's day shift and it just reinforced some of the things that bothered me from the beginning just kind of came back to me and it's like, mm, yeah, mm-hmm. it's time, you know? And I was thinking, cause I'm like, well, maybe if I can adjust my hours a little bit or something. And then I'm just like, no, I don't think that would do it either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When so. you, and when you hit that point, it, it was, you know, I know I've done it in the past. Like you, when you feel you've hit that point, you really need to probably look for something else. You know, because mm-hmm. your, your brains are your your mind is essentially shutting down on that job. You know, not that you're going to do less work or anything, but you know what I mean. Like you're not going to be, you may not attack it the way you did before. Like you, you know, still go in, get your work done, but not, you know, crush it or you know, um, offer to work extra or you know all those little things that normally you would do. You start reining those in because it's like, why am I doing this? You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The phrase uh, teamwork makes the dream work was used today. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> wow. 
You, you know what though? I, I think I mentioned it on here before. Like when I worked at the video store, the one DM wanted me to read management books. And when I mm-hmm. did, that was the hardest part for me is there's so many of those stupid sayings. Yeah. And I'm not looking at those the way I looked at like the, um, uh, progress is better than perfection, that kind of thing. But that's the kind of stuff that's in the book also, because there's the old, you know, if there's time to lean, there's time to clean and different. Oh God. Yeah. They're terrible. <sighs> but the problem is a lot of them can definitely be applied. And there's probably truth to most of them, which it makes it even more annoying because if yeah. they were completely false, you could just shoot all the holes in it. You know, and be like, no, we're done with this. But the fact that there's elements of truth in a lot of them, it's like, they're right. If there is time to lean, I could be cleaning something. Yeah. (laughs) There's just so many better ways. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And it's always from some like smarmy DM type person. That's it. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, the type that's always got the company logo emblazoned on whatever they're wearing. And, you know, come on. It didn't help that two different people um, badmouthed my shift with me sitting right there. Wow. That's, uh, that's brazen. Yes. yes. It was, yeah, it was pretty brazen. And it was about all I could do not to tell them where they could go. Yeah. Um, Would have been fun you know, if you're just sitting there and been like, ahem. <laughs> <laughs> I invite the division. That's you're so further- funny. I said, you are more than welcome to come work the, work my shift with me. Yeah. I said, I'd be happy to have you. The into- And one of the guys like, well, I've seen him for up to 10 o'clock. I'm like, yeah, we're there until 3.30 in the morning. Come mm. stay with us the entire night. See how we do it. I'd love to hear your input and how we can do better. Yeah, sure. I mean, he's, you know, clearly full of ideas and, and hard work. So, yeah. Oh, that guy's <laughs> Anyways, he gets under my skin so much because he's wow. he's very smarmy and mm. he goes golfing with the managers and stuff. And uh, that should never happen. Yes, I know. But he goes golfing, drinking with the guys with man upper management. Uh, yeah, that should not should not be happening. But anyway, because that's not a that is not a professional situation there. No, that doesn't surprise me though. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> if someone listens to the podcast, then I'm going to get fired tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, if anyone's going to get fired this week because of something that's said on a podcast, it's going to be Tony, not you. So, oh, yeah? <laughs> because he played <laughs> – no, not really. Um, okay. He played hooky on Salty Language last week because uh... he, he was sick. And he didn't realize – he asked me if I could have Heno fill in for him. He thought we would record Friday. Heno and I recorded Saturday instead, and Tony was feeling a lot better on Saturday, so he could have recorded, <laughs> but instead he went out and got tacos and beer. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. And I called him out on yeah. that show and then on Salty Language that we just did. Nice. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> I kid, though. If someone's listening that he works with, he didn't, <laughs> you know, we're talking about yeah. Saturday. He didn't miss work. I don't know. Whatever. Call him and report him. It's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid. Oh, that's, too funny. So that's kind of what I've been dealing with and just kind of working through the last uh, last couple weeks. Mm. Um, yeah. And quite frankly, it's been too long. I don't remember why I wasn't able to make it last week. Oh, that's why. Because um, I had to work on Monday. Ah. East. Sure, sure. I had to work on Monday. Went and, and got tacos we, and beer. I think yeah. we, huh? You went and got tacos and beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I know how funny would that have been if that would have happened, though? Like, we'd probably be dying oh, yeah. right now just because of the joke of it. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. So, but yes, uh, I had to work. So that's why I wasn't able to join you guys last Monday. Right. With that, all right, who wants to go next? Oh, I'll go next because if we're going to make people wait, yeah, <laughs> we're going to make them wait. Uh, <laughs> yep. Um, I actually think I've done better this week uh, as we've had a little more sun. 
up until what yesterday or whatever day before. Um, but we've, we've seemed to be getting more sun, which is really making a difference in my mood. Um, which is nice, you know, cause yeah, it was stinky for a while there. Uh, so, you know, that, that's made me feel pretty good. The last couple of days I've been mad again and it's, you know, look it, here, it's been just blah. <laughs> Actually today it wasn't, it was sunny. It was just cold today. Um, but we're yeah. on, we're on the way up, so we'll be all right. Um, I, uh, uh, forgot what I was going to say and I'm, oh, uh, so to push my anxiety <laughs> this week, uh, Tony and I did our first show live on YouTube. Um, we've, you know, and it's, it, it's funny because we literally edit almost nothing from the shows and the fact that we don't just do the show live every week. I don't know why we just don't do it because it won't mm-hmm. change anything. At all. Yeah, anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, actually, it would probably improve it because when we're in the same room, we just – there's a better energy, but whatever. Um, and I was pretty nervous about it, you know, going into it, and which is funny because I've – you know, I've been on a couple live podcasts. I was on, you know, Beyond the 140 twice, at least twice, and that that's a live show, you know, so there was no uh, – you know, safety net there, or, oh, we'll edit that later or something. So, <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. We, we had a really good time doing it. Tony set things up really nicely. So it was super easy for us and, and whatever went well. You know, we didn't have a lot of people watching, but honestly, we didn't, first of all, we didn't really expect any, but also we were kind of like as our first go anyway. So it's, you know, probably better off to not see that one. um but yeah we we had a lot of fun doing it so that was you know that was pretty cool because something we hadn't done before and it was our 400th episode so which boggles my mind especially in like Mm -hmm. this show this episode is 199 for anyone keeping track at home um wow next episode for us will be 200 so yeah that's that's a lot of podcasting yes it is so Yep. It's really funny because, you know, the ma- one of the main reasons I started was to give me something to um, feel responsible for each week, you know, to where I'd feel like I let someone down basically if I wasn't wasn't there. And, I, you know, I've held up pretty well. Almost missed tonight. Yeah. <laughs> tonight almost caught me. But, yeah. So, uh uh, what else? There was something else I was going to say, but I don't remember. Nope. Don't remember. Figure out how to get rid of, did you figure out how to get rid of some extra testosterone? I, I haven't gone in and given blood yet. I actually, my brother told me tonight to, uh, um, cause I don't know if you have to make an appointment or if you can just go. Um, so I, I have to check and then we're going to go probably later this week. So I can finally get that done. And hopefully cool. that that's all it takes. Um, yeah. So, um, what else was there? I feel like there was, man, I cannot remember. I know there was one more thing I had in my head. Oh, well, that's all I got. So I guess, you know, my win for the week is the fact that even though I was nervous as heck to do the live show, I still went, we did it. Um, you can tell how nervous I am because if you watch it, you'll see how few times I look at the camera. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a part of that also is because like when Tony and I do the podcast, it, it doesn't feel like we're doing a news report. You know, it feels we're talking to each other. So that is literally mm-hmm. what we were doing the whole time is basically just talking to each other and looking up at his uh, monitor occasionally. Um, so, yeah. Um but that, you know, what's really, I actually, I, that's what I was going to mention. The fact that I have tons of body issues and have for years and years and years, never once did that concept pop into my head before we did it. All I was nervous <laughs> about was just the fact that we were doing this live and that's it, you know? So that was, I've, you know, kind of a win there. Yeah. So. That's how distracted that's awesome. I was by the nerves. <laughs> yeah. 
But, you know, once we started, I got a beer in me. We were good. So a nice, uh, refreshing hams. <clears throat> so, yeah. All right. So, yeah, I think that's it for me. What you got? Yeah, cool. Oh, I just woke up at 5 a.m. this morning with massive stomach pain. It was like, oh, joy. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, boy. But, but what I realized this last week is I never got sick this entire winter. No. That's really great for you because I know you usually struggle with some sinuses or. Yeah. 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 Like all the time. I I didn't get a cold. I didn't even get the crud. And usually (laughs) when I go home and I'm around my nephews, that's just a Petri dish of. Yeah. Yeah. And and it 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 hit me last week. And then and then when this happened this morning, like I I woke up and it's like it started with like, oh, I'm hungry. But then it was instantly like, oh, no, no, no. This is the gas bubbles I get. This is not good. And, and I was just kind of hoping I could fall asleep and, and make it till my alarm went off, um, which I kind of did. But by the time I woke up, I was just full blown like – and it's like I'm, I'm just going to go to work because, you know – Lying, you know, lying around the house feeling miserable, I'd just as soon get paid and, you know, yeah, <laughs> drywall. Right. I mean, it's like that's what I got going to do. Yeah, I'll right. be a little slow and yeah, I had no sleep. Like I'd, I'd, uh, I hadn't, I had a gig on Saturday night, so I got home really late. So I already was, you know, I'd already worked and didn't get much sleep. And so it was just another, you know, day of feeling like no sleep, but I feel better now, but it was just one of those weird things. Like things where all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I have like that hasn't happened to me either in months and months because yeah. my first thought was, you know, oh, was it stress? You know, because I always look for the reason what 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 causes it. And usually usually it's stress that causes it. Yeah. And what I was doing last night was I was doing my taxes. Well, I've had way more financial stress over the last you know couple of months that I've shared on here. Like that's that was nothing new, mm-hmm. you know. I just kept kind of going. So what was it? Did I eat anything differently? Did I, you know, not eat enough? You know, what what was the factor? Because usually there's usually it's pretty predictable what the factor was, and I couldn't come up with anything. So I was like, all right, well, it was a fluke. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that just happens. Maybe yeah, Sharon's exactly. trying to poison you. Yeah. Like, did you do yeah, something? Well, Maybe this is just her way of like punishing you without killing you. You know, just to remind yeah, you could, that at any time. Yeah, exactly. It could be that over. She's actually the one in control. Yeah. <laughs> I did have a, a, a fun experience with the um, appliance person that showed up for to fix my refrigerator. You know, I got the old ten to twelve window. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I left work at 9.30. Guy shows up at 10 after 12. <laughs> Asks me what's wrong. I tell him what's wrong with it. So you started first by he saying, goes, what's wrong? You're here 10 minutes late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, in the meantime, I was just taking care of stuff around the house. Fine, whatever. Mm. He goes, oh, yeah, I've had to replace that on a few of these. You know, I've had to replace a few of those. Goes through his thing. Well, we don't stock this, so we'll have to order one. And I'm like, if you've had to replace a few of these. <laughs> yeah, right. Why aren't you stocking at least one of these? <laughs> and I, yeah. And I told him, I said, you know, I almost bought one off of Amazon and installed it myself because it's only two screws. He's like, it's actually a clip on. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But you have to take off two screws to get to it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, so now. By the time I lost three and a half hours of work, three hours of work, and I have to do this again on Thursday with Mm -hmm. some two-hour window, take time off of work, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, I was just so irritated. Do you go back to work after or do you just – Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, some some people would just take the rest of the day off. That's why I was asking. I mean, it was, it was, I had eaten lunch at home. So I was like, I, you know, I got back to work at one. I had, it, cause it was Thursday. It's the end of my work week. So I had stuff I wanted to get done. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, but the good news was, and last week was kind of a bummer because we just had this, 
had a leak in, you know, and one of our owners who I really like a lot that this, this, uh, humidifier malfunctioned, like I'm surprised it didn't catch on fire. It was just so torched. And so it was a little tough dealing with that, you know, going, okay, was it something that I did? Cause I had serviced it the week before, you know, or was it just, just happened to be, you know, just a coincidence, whatever it was. But I, I, and then we've, we have just leaks happening right now because everything's melting. And so I'm like running back and forth between three units, you know, doing all the interior repairs. And one of the things I'd done just classic, just, I never change. I have a, I have what's called a building operator certification. It is a certification that was started by pretty much energy companies to they they tend to uh what they're trying to do is get people that are involved in you know in building facilities management and facilities maintenance to do energy management courses because it ultimately saves them okay you know that that cuz energy companies are required to to implement a certain amount of of uh renewable energy sources right mm. and and so they're trying to get away from um, fossil fuel sources. And in one way to do that is if everyone starts conserving energy, they can cut back, they can get rid of extra, you know, uh, expensive coal fired, uh, power plants and, and use more of the renewables and stuff. And so it's, it's a great, uh, opportunity for people to learn, but I have to renew it every year. Oh, all right. And it's typically like, you know, you have to have so many points and you, you go to a trade show, you read the, you watch a webinar, answer a quiz, read a newsletter, answer a quiz, do an energy management project or do a maintenance project. And, and since I'm just a level one, I can usually get all my points just by, by any project I do at work. But I hadn't, I was trying to come up with one that was different than the year before. And I literally would wait until the last minute. <laughs> And it just, it just made me laugh. I'm just like, man, I'm still just like I was in high school, <laughs> oh, cramming for the test at the yep. last minute. Yep. Yeah. And, and it was even better because, because I took the time off of work last Thursday, I was, everyone else had gone from work except the GM and I'm staying there. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, you know, cramming for the test at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like some things just never change. Yeah, yeah. But but what was cool is the reason I brought that up is I felt like I earned my weekend. You know, like I got one entire interior done and it was painted, and I I got my you know certification done, and I you know I did this 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 and this and 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 it just it just felt I felt like I, I was good. You know, like, like I'm good to end the week, and and that was kind of that was kind of like my again trying not trying to stay out of the negative parts of you know the thing that went wrong to begin the week mm -hmm. and looking at how I can feel good at the end of the week and go into the weekend and have a good time and I had a gig again on Saturday night um and I'll have actually two gigs this weekend Friday night and Saturday night um and, and it'll probably be the last probably one of the last times I get to play with Dave which is you know a bummer but it was fun I've I've gotten to know his parents the lot. they've been here and they've been coming to our shows and I talked to his mom last last uh on Saturday night and what a hoot <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> she's just like my mom they get to a certain age where it's like I don't care yeah <laughs> like, I'm gonna yeah yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel, and uh, and if you and if you get any little weird, I'm just going to tell you to go, you know, eat yourself. And yeah. you know, <laughs> right, love that. It was just a blast. But yeah, so that was that was yeah. That's my stuff in a nutshell. Nice. I just hope this. Uh, I, I do need to be mindful of of you know just because a couple incidents of stress didn't have a physiological effect on me doesn't mean that it can't start now. True enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's how it happens a lot. You know, it's like, it's same thing like with a back injury. It's not one thing that injures your back. Yeah. It's a series of little things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then one thing gets you. So it, 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 it kind of had, it was, today was a good reminder of like, okay, what aren't you doing that you usually do? You know, what's, what are you letting, you know, what am I not doing in my routine? Mm -hmm. 
it's always a good thing to do. A good place to start is to look yep. at you know, yep. what you've done differently. Yep. What am I, what am I not doing? What, cause it's a lot of, all this stuff is to me, it's, um, it, you know, it's funny how it's like baby steps to get better and it's almost baby steps to get worse. Yeah. Mm. You know, complacency happens in baby steps. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what I, I was telling uh, my therapist that something similar to that um, last week um, about how that's why I don't like running in place or feeling like I'm stagnant because when I do in my head, I know the difference between standing in place and backsliding is, you know, like you just said, basically it's a baby step backward, but that the slope is much more of a grade than, you know, the, the uphill climb of, you know, pushing forward. So Mm -hmm. it's one of those things I have to be very careful of. Absolutely. Exactly. Cause it, it it that's how it, complacency absolutely sneaks up on you. That's just oh, yeah. I mean, it's the whole nature of it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah. Pe- person who oh, I feel fine. I don't need to go to therapy anymore. You know, and, you yeah, know, or whatever. Yeah, I don't need to do this, or I don't need to do that, yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, I don't. I don't need to meditate. You know, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was good today. Yeah, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Good tomorrow. And then all of a sudden, there's one day where you're not so good. But now enough. Days have gone by that you don't associate it with it yeah. any longer. Right. This is true. Sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, shall we shall we topic it? <laughs> yes. On to our topic. Uh Hannah, you've got our article today? Yes, it is. From Psychology Today, seven easy things you can do instead of worrying. And these are simple practical tools to break your anxious thinking cycle. And I know we talk about this a lot, but this had a lot of um, really good, uh, what do you want to call it, kind of nuts and bolts suggestions. And, and a couple things that we hadn't, I, well, one thing that I know we haven't ever talked about that I was wanting to talk about. So the, uh, the starting pair, this is uh, Melanie Greenberg, Ph.D., She's the mindful (laughs) (laughs) self-express. It's didn't they have Tom Hanks in it? Sorry, go ahead. What's that? I said didn't they have Tom Hanks in it? Tom Hanks. (laughs) Terrible joke. Go ahead. (laughs) Oh boy, where's my drummer? (laughs) Yeah, sorry, that one was one of the bottom shelf ones. (sighs) Jeez. So she starts with, it's very difficult to distinguish helpful ways of thinking about your stressors from unhelpful ones. Your brain will try to convince you that you're helping yourself by worrying and ruminating. In fact, you are probably making things worse. You know, I never really thought about that. Yeah. Like, like, I honestly think, of, oh, well, I I need to figure this out. I need to think about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember I said like one of the first things I learned in therapy was I was like, you know, I, I think things through. I'm a logical person. I always blah, blah, blah. And then as I'm talking with her and she's pointing some stuff out, I'm like, I haven't been thinking logically at all. All this <laughs> thinking I've been doing has really been ruminating. It hasn't actually been yeah. thinking. Yeah it's, yeah. it's kind of a, you know, it was one of the, the very first like... <laughs> moments in therapy for me, you know, and my mind just blew open. Mind blown. Yep. <laughs> Repetitive negative thinking can make you more passive about solving the problem. That's kind of interesting too, because uh-huh. it, because you're now in a, you're not in an active solution. Uh, lower your mood and kill your joy, but reducing worry is easier said than done. Your, your brain's wiring makes you naturally vigilant for any future dangers or threats. We've talked about that a lot. Yeah. That that's the human part of us. You need practical tools and practices to be most successful. Following research-based practices can help you break free from rumination. That's our word for the day, rumination. <laughs> it's a good word to learn. So number, yeah, actually, it's a, it's a great word to learn and understand what it yeah. means. Yep. Mm-hmm. It sums up a lot of, of bad up-in-your-head behavior. Right. So number one, ask yourself whether worry is actually helping. (laughs) And a lot of times, probably the answer is no, because quite frankly, worrying doesn't do a whole lot for me Mm -hmm. Um, other than occupy some time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because like one of the questions, are you actually finding solutions and making concrete plans to implement them? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Are you actually seeing the situation in a new light or a more positive way? Do you feel better after thinking about the problem in this way or do you feel worse? Depends upon what kind of masochist you are. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know what? I have you utilized that type of uh, negative thinking to like keep myself awake on a long drive. One time, I had a hell of an emotional hang over the next day. <laughs> but I get bet, awake. Yeah. That's quite the negative torture. Wow, I'm pretty sure most psychologists probably won't don't recommend that. <laughs> they don't recommend. They probably, they probably, no. yeah. I wouldn't know. I'm not a doctor, but you know, just guess. You just play one on a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not this podcast though. <laughs> Not this one. That, no. no, salty language. That's where he really plays doctor. Right. <laughs> you play doctor with Tony? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> sure. So she ends with, if you aren't finding solutions and new perspectives and you feel worse, then the worry is unhelpful and you need to focus on something else. All right. That's a, that's a good tip. Yeah. So number two, change tracks or channels. So this is kind of – these are uh, ways to get yourself to kind of snap yourself out of it. So practicing thought stopping. One of them, which I've heard before, wrap an elastic band around your wrist and snap it hard every time you notice yourself beginning to worry or ruminate. Another one is to shout aloud, stop, or shout it to yourself if – it's not socially appropriate. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you just picture you're walking around and you're just like, stop it, as you're just like holding your head. Yeah. Probably not. Looney big good, time. Yeah. Thought, yeah. yeah. Visual. Yeah. Use visualization of like big red stop signs or detour signs directing you onto a new mental track or even visualize a, a television control that allows you to change channels by putting on a more positive or humorous mental program. That's one that I like to use a lot is that idea of uh hey let's um let's put let's put on a comedy and get out of this drama drama <laughs> you know yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I'm my really... big thing was all the scissors yeah vision thing the scissors yeah right yeah exactly yeah something like that it's like I I don't love the first suggestion I I've never liked that rubber band one because I I yeah. think I feel like in the wrong person that can lead to a problem you know because. Mm. Eh, I just don't like that. Some people might need that, though. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I, again, I'm not a doctor, so, you know, whatever. If it works for you, fine. I just, it just, it's never going to probably make a lot of sense to me because I don't understand self-harm, you know, so. Yeah, but I think it it's one of the things that, and the next one's the one that it, it also kind of touches on this is is externalizing things. Mm. You know, yeah, even a lot. Right. The other suggestions here are about externalizing, visualizing things or, you know, getting out of your head uh, um, and that a physical aspect would definitely be it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But you're right. It's like it is like a Mm self-punishment. Yeah. That's why I said I I think a person's got to be very careful with that. Like for some people, it's probably fine. Just in, you know, in the wrong people, I can almost see it as as though – uh, like picture instead of saying stop it, you say stop it and hit yourself in the head every time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? No, I'm, I was visually, yeah. I was visualizing the exact same thing. Yeah. That, yep. That's the way I'm kind of seeing it. Maybe it doesn't work that way because again, I don't do it, but you know, whatever. Anyway, there's, there's options there, obviously. So talk to yeah. your doctor. <laughs> now, our number three is make a worry corner. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm just, I was laughing at the words of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The worry corner. Well, what is a worry corner? And this is like some serious cognitive therapy right here. Make a worry corner in your house or designate a chair or as your worry chair. Allow yourself to worry about your stressor only when you give yourself 15 minutes, two or three times a day to sit and worry. If worries come up at other times, either write them down or save them up for your next worry period. Soon, your brain will learn to associate worry only with your worry chair and associate all your other activities. 
activities with the absence of worry. In this way, you can satisfy your urge to worry in a controlled, time-limited way. Uh oh. I'm good. That is like. Wow, I can't hear you guys right now. Really, something. In yeah, it's like that same where it's like if you can't sleep, get out of your bed. Yeah, it's so you don't start association sleeping with your bed. Yeah, that's I was going to mention that that that's it's a technique for trying to help people sleep. Yeah, is you eliminate any activity from bed except for essentially you know sleep or sex basically, and you know everything else. Like if you're going to sit and watch TV, don't do it in your bed. Put a chair in your room or whatever. Go in another room. You know that kind of thing. So yeah, that's that's good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I'm I want to because usually, you know, I'm th thinking about times. I guess what I'm getting at is I'm usually de designating time periods to, you know, like meditation and and you know mindfulness or reading or things like that. I I don't ever think about like it, the things that I want to so I stay out of worry stay out of anxiety. So I never go there, but I never think about the, the standpoint of, okay, if this is something that is in my life right now, that's not going to get resolved, create a time and a place for it, a time limit and a certain place. So I, I give it, I give it its due. I don't avoid it. I don't want to run away from it, but mm -hmm. I do it like it says in a controlled way. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that idea, too, because it, um, you know, like you said, first of all, it keeps you from ruminating all day, like versus just going, you know, like, OK, this time to this time. That's when I, you know, it's kind of like um, I remember talk, like with Jen different times when she would come home from work or whatever. And I would be, you know, like, OK, you get an hour or half an hour and then that's it. No more ruminating on work basically because if you don't stop that cycle it'll just continue you know and it, and I, I do the same thing with myself at times where I, I need something to literally interrupt me from the cycle so that I don't just keep doing it so this kind of thing makes sense because you know at the end of whether how much ever time you give yourself half hour hour whatever it is you know you can you know plan for something else after that you know to to kind of um get your head away from, uh, the other. So yeah, I, I really like that one. It's, it's funny though. Cause it, it sounds silly, you know, like it does, it's, exactly. Well, I'm going to put myself in time out basically, but it's yeah. Yep. Right. But I could see where it could work. I mean, realistically it's no, <laughs> it, it's, it's essentially kind of the opposite of meditating, you know, like yeah, you're just going to sit yeah. there and yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. I've read stuff recently that, uh, where there's a lot more thinking of instead of people avoiding situations with um, uh, that that heightens their anxieties, but rather to kind of cut down on them or this or that, but to just embrace it and and sit in it, and that you know, and that this kind of do, can do that a little bit too, I think you yeah. know. And then when you're done with it, you're like, okay, you know, like I did it. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I like this list is because, oh, there's something new here that we haven't really ever talked about. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool. So number four is externalize your worries. Picture your worries as bubbles popping in the air or as leaves floating down a stream just as a mindfulness technique that can give you some distance from your worries. Mm -hmm. Which I believe Jen's talked about before. Yep, a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Visualization skills. Uh, use humor as a distraction. Find an alternative funny image to focus on every time you start worrying. In a classic study of thought suppression, participants who were instructed not to think about a white bear ironically couldn't stop themselves from thinking about a white bear. Right. But when given an alternative image, they could focus on that instead. Mm -hmm. My favorite image is a bright pink elephant on roller skates. When you start to worry or ruminate, think of your elephant. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, you know, I, I do that, but it's not in that context. In that that was something my therapist mentioned to me uh, a while ago was basically 
um, to have distractions that work for you. You know, like if you catch yourself in a uh, spiral or something, you know, play a video game, watch a TV show, listen to music, whatever it is to disrupt that pattern and something you enjoy at the same time, you know, and, and it, it, it helps a lot. It doesn't always work, but it helps a lot, a lot of times, you know. Uh, num- number six is manage your triggers. For one week, notice and record the triggers that make you worry or ruminate, such as talking to another anxious person, lying awake in bed, or, or watching TV. Now come up with some alternative positive things to do or ways to avoid those triggers. For example, don't talk about your problems with a person who tends to react negatively or make you more anxious. That's a really – Good luck. Th- that's a – yeah, it's a tough <laughs> one, but it's a really good one. It like is. If there's a yeah. person that you go to – all the time and they tend to have a negative reaction why are you going to them yeah exactly yeah. and a- uh, avoiding things that give you a lot of anxiety like with me it's the whole tv uh tv shows and or horror films or anything that's too dark it yeah. just gives me anxiety it makes me worry it just upsets me and it's not worth it it's not yeah. entertainment for me i have so- to be careful of of tv shows and uh video games like certain games that are like super intense or whatever, like the missions are really, really hard. I've, I've gotten to where I, I don't play many of them anymore because I realized all it did was make my anxiety just go through the roof. Um, in mm-hmm. fact, like, I, I don't know if you guys remember a while ago, um, when I, I won that one contest from the obscure gentleman podcast, it was a tweet, uh, contest. And each week we were given a theme and we had, you know, how much ever time it was usually under about a week, under a week, um, to turn our, our entry in and it killed my anxiety. It was fun. I liked it. It was a creative outlet and clearly, you know, I did all right. Um, but I immediately told James, the guy who's running it, I was like, yeah, I'm retiring. Like, (laughs) like (laughs) one and done for me. I was like, the anxiety is just too much for me. Um, but and I, I've seen other people do the same thing where they just they they can't do it because it's it just makes you too anxious. And mm-hmm. as much as you might enjoy something, sometimes you got to cut out stuff for that reason, you know. Yeah. Yep. Health comes first. Yeah. Yeah, and and the last sentence was exactly was what we already talked about, which is if you're lying awake worrying at night, get up, have 15 minutes, and read a book, yeah. listen to some music, or do something else. Yeah. That's a good strategy and, uh, anyways. The last... stuff I've heard about it, you know, is that basically you're you're just going to get more anxious and uh, yep. upset or whatever, you know. So might as well get up and do something productive. Yeah, exactly. And that's the – it's it's a difficult thing to kind of let go of because we're – oh, I'm supposed to be sleeping right now. Yeah. You know, that was like my thing with this morning where I wasn't feeling well. I'm just like well, – it doesn't matter what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just going to go do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I – there was a part of me that just like, like I said, I want to just call into work, you know, and just call in sick because I'm not feeling well. And it's just like, no, just then now you're just going to be sitting around the house feeling, you know, physically yeah. and mentally miserable. Yeah. Yeah. I know my yeah. dad, my dad always used to do that when I was, you know, trying to not go to school basically, you know, and be like, you're going to yeah. feel just as bad there as you will here. So you might as well go. <laughs> just go. Exactly. <laughs> well, and it. I, like I said about that, it's like, I, Without saying it, I think my my dad understood what it was most of the time. Yeah, I, I think he understood that it was yeah. anxiety, and I just needed it a push. Fear. Yeah. yeah, and he was pushing me through it. So, um, cool. don't get me wrong. There were a few times I was sick, and he made me go to school, and then I'd come home early. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they push a little too hard. <laughs> yeah, and he'd be like, "Oh, all right." He's like, "I thought you were faking." And I was like, oh, "I understand, but." Nope. <laughs> you want me to, I, I'm happy to throw up on your shoes right yeah, now. Right. <laughs> That'll convince you. Yeah. <laughs> but like, well, now that you got that out of your system, get to school. <laughs> get to school. No, no. I'm kidding. My dad nice. wasn't like a, you know, he, he wasn't yeah. like hard on me about stuff like that, but it was, like I said, I, I, I do think he knew that it was a time when I, I just, you know, that I needed a foot in the butt to get me to go to school. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Because, like, with me, it wasn't, like, avoidance of, um, like, I wasn't trying to avoid, like, tests or this or that. I just wanted to avoid the whole thing. I, you know, I just wanted to avoid the whole social 
situation, you know? So I'm, I'm so glad at no point did my parents homeschool me because I think, you know, my, my tendencies, if they had been to where I'm not involved, like going and being interactive with people, I could be a complete hermit at this point, (laughs) you know? Sure. Well, it's always good for any of us to have that in social interaction yeah. at young ages as well as in adulthood. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And our last tip is use mindfulness. Interrupt worry cycles by getting up and walking around or, my, or by mindfully checking in with what's happening in your body. That's a really that's that's a tool that I use a lot when I'm in anxious situations. It's like in uh, Jen always talks about. Wiggle your toes. Yeah. I'm just going to say know. it. <laughs> flex, your, flex your ankles. You know, just work your way up your knees. Get up to your thighs and literally just check in with your body. You mm-hmm. just do flexing exercises. It's amazing how it'll get me out of my head yeah. right away. Mm-hmm. Well, and, that, uh, you, and like you said, that's the whole point of it is to make you yeah. aware of now. You know, it's like yes. if, if you have something in your hand, think of every little detail of it, you know, think yep. of how it feels, how it, how the weight of it, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. Do you feel a breeze on you? You know, all those things. And like when I first read about it, I was like, this is stupid, you know, like this is just, you know, but it's, it definitely can work. I, you know, again, nothing, yeah. there's a lot of things that aren't going to work every time, but that this does really help to, um, you know, snap you out of it a little bit. Same with like me where I use it the most, honestly, is when I wake up from a dream because my dreams are so weird sometimes and so real that I wake up and I don't know if I'm still in the dream basically. So I have to ground myself in order to realize that, okay, you're okay. This is the floor. This is the blanket, (laughs) you know, like kind of stuff. So yeah, that's it's so effective. Like as what you just talked about about grounding mm-hmm. and, and just putting yourself in the moment. Uh, if you notice an area of tension, send some breaths into that area to open up space or create a bit of softening. And that's just kind of a, um, a mental exercise of visualizing. Uh, you know, if you have physical tension somewhere, of of kind of like almost like curing yourself yeah. through breathing. It's another way of just getting in touch with your body. Um, and then try to give tensions labels, fear, anger, sadness, Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. be, because they're, it, it gets you out of rumination by making something actually concrete. And that's like something that I, I share about here all, all the time is when I had a breakup one time and I was just constantly, constantly just in my head about it and just. Uh, the anxiety and the everything that came along with it. And then one day I just labeled it yeah. broken heart. Yeah. I have a broken heart. That's it. And everything stopped all the confusion, yeah. everything. It was like all the feelings, everything suddenly had a name and I didn't need to be freaked well, out by it anymore. Think about it this way. Like if you have some condition or some feeling or whatever, like you don't know if it's the flu or if it's an allergy situation or this or that, and it just goes on and on and on. And you're just like, I just want to have a diagnosis. You know, I think the, like you were saying, it's the same idea. It's like, once you figure out what it is, you're like, okay, now we can deal with this because you need that closure in your head. You need that little, like, I, I like you said, I was like, I have to label this. Like I have to, yep. because I need to know what I'm fighting, you know, essentially. But yeah, that's, that's a good one. Really quick. I want to go back to the, um, the muscle example you were giving. Yeah. Um, I was listening to, uh, these guys that are former pro wrestlers named Edge and Christian. Uh, they had a wrestler named Rob Van Dam on their show and he's known for, um, uh, you know, being a, like one of the like top rope kind of guys flipping around, rolling, doing these kicks, you know, he's very aggressive and constantly moving. And he said that the way that he, you know, that he can do that is he stretches for a good hour or so before he goes out to do his thing. And he was talking about when he's stretching, cause people have been like, Hey, teach me your routine because he's been relatively healthy through his career. 
And he was like, I can't because he's like, in my head, he's like, I'm thinking about the position of this part of my body. And then I'm thinking about this muscle and opening that muscle up so that I can. And he's just going through this process. That was exactly what you were just talking about. Mm. And, and, you know, and he said, that's why it's so hard for him to teach because he's like, I can't put you in that mindset I'm in, you know, uh, he's Mm -hmm. like, there's so many parts at one time. And, uh, so I, I found that kind of interesting when you said that because I was like, I just heard someone applying this. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he's been doing it for, you know, years and years that he said he doesn't. That's how he feels um, ready to go out and perform, mm-hmm. you know, and without it, he said he doesn't feel ready. Like if he's got to rush it or something, he doesn't feel right. And there's a ton of stuff out there about work stretches and desk, you know, things that you can do when you're sitting at your desk, yeah. um, you know, stretches and exercises and different things like that. All of them will work to stretch muscles out and to, you know, get the oxygen pumping in your bloodstream and all that good jazz. Just get up and start doing jumping jacks. No, that too. Nobody will think anything. Up. Nobody will think anything of it. <laughs> you know, and you say woo after each one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's funny <laughs> yeah so there's our list and if you if you are interested in more of these concepts uh this article was adapted from her book the stress proof brain which was published in 2017 so melanie greenberg uh the stress proof brain nice yeah cool. well guys i don't know it's about that time what do you guys yes, think it is. Good? yeah yeah all right. Well, folks, if you, you'd like to continue the conversation, you know what to do. You can reach us at the crazy live podcast. Um, dot weebly dot com is our website. The crazy life podcast at outlook dot com is our, our email address. You can reach me on Twitter at Jen's crazy life. That's Jen with a G or my other account, uh, which is dits with the tits, whichever you prefer. And uh, Hanno, how can they reach you? Find me on Twitter at Ida Heno, and you can find me on Facebook, Heno Heiter, and also Facebook Messenger. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Just Slimo, and you can catch me podcasting about Gotham and Orville on Gotham Lights or the Orville Lights, which you can hear on any of your typical podcast players. But not for long. No. <laughs> nope. Two more episodes of Gotham, and it's done. I still got to wait a month. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a month break and then they're playing the last Are two. Are you kidding me? Nice. Really? Ugh. Yeah. At least I got Orville to watch in the meantime. Yeah. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Jeez. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can also find the show on Twitter at uh, the Crazy Life Pod. Uh, you can find me at Dunami. Uh, you can find my other podcast at Salty underscore Language or at SaltyLanguage dot com. Uh, that show is not safe for work, so please be careful. Um, much like this show, you can find Salty Language on uh, Spotify also. Um, so if you're using Spotify, you can find us there. Um, I lost my place. Uh, Facebook group for this podcast at facebook.com slash group slash crazy light podcast. Um, we are part of the Danger Entertainment Network, which can be found at dangerentertainment.net and the Tangibound Network, which can be found at tangiboundnetwork.com. Uh, so please go check those out and you'll probably find some other shows you're interested in. There's a whole bunch on there. <laughs> mm-hmm. on both of them actually, I think have a good, a robust lineup, if you will. And Hobie. Um, so what was I going to say here? I forgot. Oh, uh, just really quick. I just want to say, um, to anyone, if anyone listening is, uh, donated to my GoFundMe, I want to say thank you. Um, it's, you know, always nice to know that people are, you know, willing to help. And, uh, you know, if anybody else, you know, no pressure, but if anybody listening would like to help, um, the link is in my Twitter, uh, bio. Uh, I believe it's also in my Instagram bio. If you happen to follow me on there. Um, so yeah, again, thank you to anyone who helped and yeah. So if you feel as though you need some help, uh, please reach out, um, you know, to a doctor, friend, 
whatever. Just try not to be alone if it's a, a time of, of crisis. Um, you know, call one of the suicide prevention numbers or, or text with the different ones that are available online or whatever it takes. Just, you know, please don't be alone and please don't act on it. Um, and also, uh, try to reach out to your friends, make sure they're doing okay, especially if you know they're going through a struggle of any kind. Um, and, uh, you know, as I've said on here plenty of times, it's like, don't, don't necessarily take I'm fine as, as truth. Cause a lot of people hide behind it. Um, and then lastly, um, let's, you know, just keep trying to be nice to one another. And, uh, that includes you as well. You know, be, be nice to yourself. Absolutely. And with that folks, have a, Fabulous week, and we will be here next week just waiting for you.